So Alex, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's really an honor actually to have you on here. Can you introduce yeah. yourself a little bit, like tell a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. So first things first, thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm really, really happy to be here, just sharing my story. And you know, at the end of the day, um, as you're going to see in my introduction, uh, when it comes to running, for me, it's not just about me, but it's also about just building a community, having a community and inspiring others. So getting an opportunity like this is always great because there's always going to be that one person or a number of people that actually listen to this and this helps them take, you know, that next step on their journey. So very, very happy. And, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. So yeah, my name is Alex or Alexander in full, Alexander Wande. I live in Cape Town, South Africa. This is my home. This has been my home for most of my life, but I'm actually originally from Zim. Um, so I was born in Zimbabwe and left when I was young and I moved to Cape Town and Cape Town has been my home ever since. I'm a runner. Trail running is what I focus on. And, you know, it's I really love spending time out on the mountains. And yeah, I'd say that's that's me that's running. And let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, like how did you start with trail running? Because most of the time people evolve from road running to trail running. But as you <laughs> told me before, like you you even never uh, participated in a road race. So how did you all of a sudden like all already started with, with trail running? Yeah, 100%. So I'll start, you know, from the very, very beginning. So I used to do track in primary school, but this was never anything serious. And I was never really that good at it. It. Uh, it was mostly just because you know our school was quite small and we just needed people to participate then we never really trained that much it would just go out there compete with other schools and then come back so i don't really count that as part of my running journey but what happened is at my high school sport was always compulsory and uh, you had to do a summer sport and a winter sport and so for me uh, my summer sport was always cricket because that was also something that i did from primary school uh -huh. and my winter sport was hockey now i really enjoyed hockey and I enjoyed cricket, but it got to a point where it was just getting so competitive and I knew that I didn't want to take cricket far, right? And so I thought, okay, what's the easiest thing to do out there? And I thought, okay, running must be easy. It basically requires no skill. And that's what I thought then. And so then I signed up for running. And, you know, at first I really hated it. And the thing is, there were a lot of people that did it because sport was compulsory. And so even on these runs, everyone would just be walking, no one would be pushing. And it was just basically a chilled time with just high school friends. <laughs> and so that's what it was at the beginning. And then just out of nowhere, one day I decided to challenge myself and actually see if I could finish the route that we did um, mm -hmm. without stopping, right, without walking. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I finished that. When I finished that route that we always did without walking, that was one of the best moments. And that was such like a big personal achievement mm -hmm. that that is what actually sparked the running joy and the love for running that I have. And, you know, from there, I actually started running outside of school. So I went from this person who hated running, who basically was trying to avoid all the training sessions that we had, just giving in excuses to somebody who actually started running outside of school. I started with park run. Um, and then I actually, I, so I have done some road races, but it's never been, you know, going out there to try and like really no, perform yeah. or do anything super well. Um, so I did a few park runs, then, you know, what actually happened is because I didn't really have a coach then, I went from doing a few park runs to joining a running crew where my longest run was like 8Ks, right? And then I signed up for my first half marathon in like three weeks without training. And I went out and did a half marathon. <laughs> And that was basically my first official road race, you know, a half marathon. And yeah, ever since then, I've transitioned from road to trail. Um, that was mainly because of some injuries. You know, I got an injury, I think, after that first half marathon, I think about three to four months in, I got an injury. And then coming back was a bit difficult. And one of the recommendations with, from the physio that I was working with was, hey, try trail running because it's a softer surface and it's mm -hmm. not as hard on your body as road running. And ever since then, I, you know, just fell in love with the sport and now it's actually the main thing you know trail running is the main yeah because thing. you're also like super lucky with all the the nature and the mountains you have in cape town right but yeah um because you were telling me before that now right now it's 24 degrees there like mm -hmm. when i was here doing summer in barcelona when i was trying to go out on the trail it was for me personally it was too hot like how yeah. do you do it in trail running there in cape town because i can imagine that the temperatures are even higher then the yeah. Barcelona. So how do you cope with that? Yeah, that's very true. The temperature, it does get very, very hot. 
And one of the things that I always avoid is trying to go out around midday. So I guess the secret is just get out as early as you can, or if you're going to be running later in the day, then just make it around sunset, right? The good thing is that for me as a trail runner, as an athlete, I actually love summer that I have to go out very, very early. But what it means is for the days where I have two or more sessions, it makes it very, very easy because I don't, I have more time to spread it out across, right? So for example, right now the sun is rising as around 5.30 and then it sets around eight. So I know if I'm gonna get my first session in, I can get it in around 5.30, then my last one will be later on in the day and it's not yeah. like one after the other or anything like that. So right. that's just the main thing is making sure that you don't run in the sun or midday when it's hot and just planning very well. Yeah. yeah and then actually because that's how i came across your page um you were doing like this running streak how did you experience yeah. that and like why did you start it because you had quite some days on it and then yeah, yeah. unfortunately you had to stop because of an injury but how did yeah. you hope this whole plan started mm -hmm. yeah so a couple of years back you know when i was still quite fresh into the sport when i was still new to running i came across this guy called Hela Sidibe or also known as, you know, hella good. And he has a YouTube channel an Instagram page. He's just a big, big runner with a large community. And that's what he does. He's been running every day for, I think, four or five years now. And he inspired me to get started with running every day. So that's a goal that I set for myself is, okay, I'm going to run every single day for an entire year. And unfortunately, because of an injury, I didn't make it. Um, I made it to 250 after struggling for a few months, you know, with an injury, I decided to, you know, actually call it at 250 just so that the injury wouldn't get worse. But yeah, I decided to start that because, you know, it was this challenge of, can I actually be disciplined and be consistent for this for many months? Mm -hmm. And it was such, such a big challenge and such a joy. When I look back, I really, really love that I did that because, you know, just like with running, you start something thinking that, you know, it's just going to be that but you don't always see all the extras that come along with it, right? You don't see the community that you build. You don't see the kind of respect that you gain for yourself. You don't see the joy of just getting to meet new people and just knowing that, okay, if I really want to do something and I set my mind to it, I can do it, right? And for coming from that run streak, one of the main things that I learned is just that if I really want to do something, I can do it. It just built this insane amount of confidence in me just to know that, you know what, whether it's running or whether it's business, whether it's life, whatever it is, if I want to do something, I can do it. You just have to keep going and you just have to build discipline. But yeah, that was the running streak and loved it. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm going to get back to that, like that attitude of like, if I can, if I believe in it, I can do it. But first, mm -hmm. how did you overcome your injury? Because I know a lot of people will struggle with like an injury after or, bec or because of running, they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. So like, what was your secret in overcoming it? How did you handle it? Yeah. So when I got injured, it was really bad because, you know, I was doing the street and obviously because it was meant to be an entire year, when I started feeling the injury coming around, I didn't stop immediately. So I tried to prolong it and I also just tried to go easy. And so what that actually meant is I was actually making the injury worse. Right. And so that injury actually ended up keeping me out of running for about seven, eight months um, where I wasn't running or towards the end, I then started running, but a little bit. And in terms of coming back, so I'd actually been working with a physio before for my first ever injury that was like shorter, right, and easier to solve. So I was seeing the physio and then I also started seeing a chiropractor and then I also started using um, the brand that my chiropractor has also created and this tool that they've created which is basically a board called the Zlant board and that really helped me you know the combination of working with the physio working with the chiro and then having a tool that can actually help kind of motivate you it's very simple but actually motivates you to stretch you know to do your workouts to just get everything done um that is one of the things that really helped me get back after many many months of struggling and also the one thing is strength training as runners, you know, we all know the importance of strength training, but I feel like not many people do it, even myself early on in the journey of running, I still wasn't that big into strength training, but that injury really forced me to start looking at, okay, as a runner, if I want to take this to the next level, if I want to be running a lot of miles and if I really want to compete, then I have to supplement that with a lot of recovery. 
enjoy stretching. I have to make sure that I'm always doing my strength work. I have to make sure that I'm just taking care of everything either with my physio, with my chiro, or whoever I have on my support team. So those are just the main things that help me and that I would say if anyone is injured, then they should probably focus on that. Yeah, I totally agree. Like last year, I was also injured a lot. And then I discovered the wonderful world of strength training. Um, so now I, I very yeah. well stick to my at least two strength trainings a week, even though I don't like them anymore as much as I as you, as I used to. But just because yeah. I know the benefits. So uh, yeah. yeah, really good that you also pointed out. So like uh, if everyone, like if someone is listening and who has an injury, yeah. Strength training people, strength, strength training. training. <laughs> um, so to get back to your, like your your attitude of uh, if you believe in it, you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. Can we know what your big aspirations are for the future? Like what well, what you have planned, or it's still kind of secret? Or <laughs> so I mean, part of it is a little bit of a secret, but um, I would say that the main thing, you know, even outside of running, is just in the last few years of my life, I've really just really not discovered as such but really come across the fact that as humans we are capable of anything you can really do anything that you want be it running be it your personal life be it business school whatever it is you can do whatever you want and that's something that i learned that actually started from running and has just like also spilled into the other areas of my life so for me as a personal mission one of like my main mission is to really help other people grow and realize that um that you are capable of anything that you put your mind to. And if you really, really want something, then if you're willing to work and you're willing to be consistent and actually make it through the tough times and also have a bit of patience in you, then eventually you are bound to win. Whether it is at that thing that you're looking for or sometimes what happens is along the journey, you actually grow and you realize that, hey, I could be aiming for something different that's more suited for me, or I could actually set an even higher goal, right? Which is something that um, happens sometimes. So it's just knowing that you are capable of anything. And for me, my personal mission, again, is just helping people realize that. So whether it's on a personal front, helping people move on from where they are to where they want to be, or whether it's a business, just helping that grow, from where they are today to where they want to be tomorrow. Yeah, so that's like already a lot of inspiration. And can yeah. you also like make it something specific for you, like running wise, or are you still, you're just gonna see where, how it goes in 2023, or do mm -hmm. you have something like a big dream to achieve this? Yeah. Year? So in terms of running, I definitely want to be going pro. Um, that is something that I'm definitely looking at, you know, in the near future um, or just in the future in general. I think one of the things is, you know, when I started running in high school, right? Because I had to, and then it actually evolved to becoming something that, hey, I actually like this thing. Let me start doing it in my free time. Let me do it outside of school by choice. And then it actually became this thing of, hey, you know, if I train, I can become faster. Now it's like, okay, yes, I can become faster, but now I can start competing. So that's one of the things that I really liked even last year is just really pushing myself at most of the races that I set myself on and like, okay, let's really push ourselves. Let's compete. Let's see where we can place um, and just pushing yourself. And so that's one of the main things for me in the future. One of my aspirations and goals is to really become a top trail runner, is to really put myself out there, push me you know, push myself to becoming the best athlete I can be and just going pro training and racing at races internationally and, you know, some of the biggest races out there. So at the moment, I don't have a specific race in mind that I like, okay, definitely want to win this big race. But for me, it's just getting to that higher level to that higher status where I know that, okay, you know what, um, I'm really here to compete. And I'm really here to just show that, you know what, a person that started years back, just out of nowhere, can mm -hmm. actually do this and you know you can apply this to different areas of your life as well it is like a very very nice dream actually to um to set for yourself and i really wish you all of luck with it but mm -hmm. how exactly does our um normal trainings week look like then for you because a lot of people they're just like you know running two or three maybe four times a week and then doing yeah. hopefully every now and then some their their speed <laughs> training but how does it look like your your training week if you're mm -hmm thinking about going pro. Can you give a little bit more information about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, right now in January, 2023, the way my current schedule is looking is I'll start off the first thing and it's not running. The first thing that I have on my training calendar is strength training, so to the gym, right? At the gym, I'm at the gym every single day. 
Um, and that's something that I've actually been doing for the last few months. It's just making sure that I show up, whether it's for an easy session or whether it's for like a very, very hard session. I'm just making sure that I'm showing up. So I have gym every single day. Monday to Friday are usually when I do have my harder sessions in, in some in those days. And then Saturday and Sunday is more recovery focus in the gym. And then in terms of running, Monday is my rest day for running. So either I will do like a very, very easy recovery run or I might just go out for a walk. And then on Tuesday, I have the strength training that I have at the gym, plus I have track session, right? Or maybe something on the road, but something that's faster. And then in terms of Wednesday, I have the strength session as well, but then I also have another run. This can be a trail run or a road run, something that's easy and not pushing myself, just taking some recovery as well. And then Thursday is another harder workout in the week. So that can, you know, is either hills, so out on the mountain, out on the trails, and really just pushing myself, whether it's long hills, maybe 15, 20 Ks, right? Um, and just going up the hills and just running that, um, or maybe something shorter, hill sprints or hill repeats. So whatever it is, just focus on gaining some elevation. And then Friday is another day where it's basically recovery, but maybe not as short, um, but just recovering for, just making sure that I'm all ready for the weekend long runs, which are usually on Saturday. That is when I have the main run, uh, the main long run. And I always, most of the time that's in the mountains, that's on the trails, but then occasionally I might have like a three hour road run out on the road. So they've just gotta get that done. And then Sundays either have a second shorter long run or that's more of a now just shorter normal recovery run. And then on certain days, um, sometimes Friday, sometimes Tuesday, I might have a second run of the day, just depending on where we are in the training cycle. Wow, that uh, sounds super intense. Let me tell you that. Um, so if you don't reach your goal of becoming pro, because I know how dedicated you are, then yeah. I don't know uh, <laughs> what what might be standing in your way. Yeah. Uh, so you clearly know what you're talking about. Do you have like some last piece of advice, some last tip you want to give to to the people who are watching that you're like, mm, I wish I would have known this before before I started. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I'm not going to repeat what I've already mentioned about just putting yourself out there. But I think the main thing that I would love to leave with everyone is that, you know, sometimes just staying where you are and just living or just existing and not really setting goals and just pushing yourself might seem like the comfortable position to be in. It might seem easy easy it might seem good but it really never is because sometimes when you look back and you realize that you know you had opportunities or there are things that you could have done that you didn't do you don't always feel good about yourself and so for me it's always just always be seeking growth in different areas of your life wherever you can just try and push yourself put yourself out there because the thing is you can set goals but you never truly know where you're going to land up and what always happens is the more you put yourself out there, even in running, right, the more consistent you are, eventually you're going to get to a place where you start to perform better than you even imagined, right? Even in life, you just put yourself out there and you're consistent enough, you get to a point where you land up in an even better position. Because me, when I started running, when I said, okay, you know what, Alex, we're going to start doing park runs, we're going to start running outside of school and running in my spare time. I never expected to have, you know, a large community backing me. I never expected to, you know, have an audience on social media. I never expected to, you know, be sponsored and run with and for ASICs. I never expected to be where I am today. And it's just the main thing of pushing yourself. So that is the main message that I'm going to leave for everyone is in 2023 and beyond is just constantly seek growth, put yourself out there and just be willing to be vulnerable and be disciplined and put in the work and eventually you will land up either where you want to be or even in it. Well, Alex, it was so interesting to hear all your thoughts about it, also like all your tips and tricks, because it is quite obvious that you have a lot of experience going on. So I really want to thank you for that. I will also leave your Instagram handle below so people can follow your adventures and also see um, how yeah your competing season will look like. Thank you again. And um, I would say keep on running. <laughs> 100%. Awesome. Thank you. Likewise, Lisa. Have a good one.